right, welcome everyone to the beginning of our study of rational functions. <clears throat> this first lesson is going to be on just the parts of a rational function. What a rational function is, and also what are the parts, the little things that we're going to be using when we get to graphing these functions themselves. So first of all, real quickly, what is a rational function? A rational function is just a function that looks like p of x over q of x, <clears throat> where both of those two functions, the p and the q, are polynomials. So prior to this, you've studied a lot about polynomials, looking at zeros and degrees of a polynomial and that kind of thing. And those are all going to be useful in this particular chapter as well, or this unit. All right, notice that the q of x is not allowed to be 0 because you're never allowed to divide by 0. Here are some examples, quick examples. We'll be looking at those three functions later on in this video as well. So the parts that we're going to be look at, looking at today are points of discontinuity. We're going to be looking at vertical asymptotes. And we're looking at holes. We haven't discussed this yet in class, but we are going to look at what's called a hole on a function. We're going to be looking at zeros, and we're going to be looking at horizontal asymptotes. So first of all, we're going to look at point points of discontinuity. Really, I'm going to be going through and defining these things before we get to graphing them, or sorry, uh, the actual examples. So the point of discontinuity is any x value that makes the denominator q of x equal to 0. We're going to be doing this by looking strictly at the denominator and setting it equal to 0 and solve for x. Now, if necessary, we're going to be factoring or using the quadratic formula, if it's a quadratic in the denominator, obviously. So it's all prior knowledge pieces that we already have and we already should know how to do. A vertical asymptote is graphically a vertically or sorry, a vertical dashed line that a graph approaches but never crosses. So if you recall from our in-class discussion, we looked at a graph, and that graph looked a little bit like this, where we had this vertical dashed line, and our graph got really close to it, but it never touched, and it never crossed. And we're going to be finding those the same way you would with a point of discontinuity. They are actually the x values that make the denominator equal to 0, usually. Sometimes we get these things called holes, what we're going to discuss in a minute, but more often than not, they are our vertical asymptotes. The holes are a new type of thing for us, graphically. They are still a point of discontinuity that is not an asymptote. We're going to find them by doing a lot of factoring and possibly canceling. So just like in the fraction, if we had the fraction 2 over 6, we could really write the fact fraction 2 over 6 as 2 over 2 times 3 or 2 times 1 in the numerator. We could cancel both of those 2s. I would say it's 1 over 3. In our cases, we're going to be looking at things like x minus 4 times x plus 1 over x minus 4 times x plus 2. And because both x minus 4s cancel, we get a whole at x equals 4. All right, so if the thing cancels, we're going to get a whole. And graphically, that really looks like this. The graph would be going along, and there'd be a little hole right here, and then it would just continue on in whatever path 
it was going. Okay, so that right there is the hole. But it's a point of discontinuity because I drew and then I had to jump over that point and then I kept drawing again. All right, next one here is our zeros. Our zeros are also called our x-intercepts, where a graph crosses the x-axis. And this is any x value that makes the numerator, or p of x, equal to 0. And the same as the points of discontinuity, in this case we're just looking at the numerator, we're going to set the numerator equal to 0 and solve for x. And it might require factoring, and it might require the quadratic formula, depending on what is in your numerator. All right, this is the one that's going to take a lot more room. The horizontal asymptote is kind of a process, but it's really just a comparison. Um, a horizontal asymptote is a horizontal dashed line that has a that a function approaches as x goes towards infinity and negative infinity. So graphically, it looks a little bit something like this. Not sure where my stuff doing that today. Let's go here. And we have this dashed line. And really what we're talking about is as x goes to infinity, this direction, it approaches this dashed line. And as x goes towards negative infinity, it approaches this dashed line on the other side. It can cross somewhere in the middle, but it really only is important at the ends. It's more of an end behavior asymptote end behavior then it is a non-crossing line talks about what happens on each end now the how to is not hard it just you have to think so we're going to compare the degree of the numerator to the denominator there's three different things that can happen here the first is if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, then y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. If they are equal, then we get a ratio of a over b where a is the leading coefficient of the numerator and b is the leading coefficient of the denominator. So it's really the numbers in front of the biggest degree variable. Saying something along the lines of this. If I had 3x squared plus blah 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 over 2x squared plus blah 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 because the degrees are the same here the ratio of leading coefficients is 3 over 2 so I would say my horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 over 2 and it is simple as that all right the last piece if you kind of look at a process of elimination, when the degree is bigger in the bottom, it's 0. When they're equal, it's a over b. And lastly, when the numerator is bigger, where's it at? There it is. If the numerator is bigger, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Let's look at some examples. We're going to be looking at finding all of those pieces. Now, we're not graphing yet because that's not where we're going right now in this particular lesson. We really want to look at how to find all of the pieces. So we're going to look first at 2x minus 1 over x plus 4. 
and we want to find points of discontinuity. So first of all, remember point of discontinuity and vertical asymptote are essentially the same thing. We are looking at our, oops, the eraser there we go I want our POD the point of discontinuity we're gonna be saying okay well let's set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for X so we're gonna subtract 4 and I get X equals negative 4 so that's my point of discontinuity it happens at X equals negative 4 and my vertical asymptote is that same value. My vertical asymptote is x equals negative 4. Now, because nothing in the numerator and denominator cancel, there are no holes in this problem, I can find the zeros. The zero would be whenever the numerator is equal to 0. So I'm going to add 1. plus 1, plus 1, and I'm going to divide by 2, and I'm going to say x equals 1 half is my 0 or my x-intercept, and we're going to actually write that as a coordinate. So this is 1 half, comma, 0, as the 0 of my, poly or of my function. And our horizontal asymptotes, or asymptote. If I look at the numerator and the denominator and I look at their degrees, the degree of the numerator here is a 1 and the degree of the denominator is 1. That means they are the same. If I was to add in a leading coefficient here, we can always put that number there. We can always put a 1 in front of a variable if we want to. <clears throat> My leading coefficients are 2 and 1, and so that's just the horizontal asymptote of 2. Alright, let's look at another example. Now we have function g of x. And g of x, if I was to look at the point of discontinuity, vertical asymptote, same thing, zero, horizontal, there might be holes, I don't know in this case. Um, we have to look at the denominator. So x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to zero. And you can use quadratic formula if you need to, but this one does factor. So this is x minus 5 and x plus 2. That means x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. The things that make these things zero, right? Five makes the left one zero. Negative two makes the right one zero. So my points of discontinuity are x equals five and negative two. And that is the same thing as my vertical asymptotes. So there are two vertical asymptotes in this case. The zero of the poly or the, the rational function is when the numerator is equal to zero. And so I'm going to subtract four, subtract four, and I get x equals negative four as the zero, and we like to write that as a <clears throat> um, coordinate. It's negative four comma zero. Uh, nothing in the numerator and denominator canceled because x plus four is not part of the denominator. So there were no holes in this particular case either. And horizontal asymptote, the degree of the numerator is a 1, and the degree of the denominator is a 2, and therefore the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0 because the denominator is bigger than the numerator. All right, I have one more example before we are done for the lesson. This one is going to be h of x. It's got a quadratic over a quadratic, so it's going to require a little bit more work. And let's see. Um, I want to kind of do this one the way I would normally do a problem. I would normally just factor 
the top and the bottom before I do any of the extra math involved. So here, x squared minus 2x minus 8 does factor to oops, x minus 4 and x plus 2. And the denominator does factor as well. And more often than not, our uh, rational functions or our quadratics are going to factor because they really want us to understand what's going on and we want to know how to factor as well. All right, so that factors to 2x minus 1 and x plus 2. We notice that there are things in common in the numerator and the denominator. We have an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. We'll get to that in a moment. That is one of our holes here. So we have the point of discontinuity, the POD. Point of discontinuities are x equals, oops, let's actually do that. We didn't set those equal to 0. So we had 2x minus 1 and x plus 2 equal to 0. That gives us, for the left one, if we do that, we said 2x minus 1 equals 0. We'd add 1, so we get 2x equals 1. And divide by 2, we'd get x equals half. So that means x equals 1 half and x equals negative 2 are points of discontinuity. Now, here's where things get a little bit different than the last couple examples. My vertical asymptote and holes. There's a vertical asymptote on the one that doesn't cancel. So x equals 1 half is a vertical asymptote, but negative 2 is not. x equals negative 2 is a hole because they cancel. Now, this is not going to happen in every single problem. It happens every once in a while. Well, that also goes to the zeros. Because that factor cancels, it is no longer a 0. Only the x minus 4 creates a 0. And so we get x equals 4 as our only 0 of this particular rational functions. Sorry, rational function. So that canceling gets rid of some stuff. It gets rid of a a zero in our case, and it also gets rid of a vertical asymptote and just creates a hole. We'll look at how to graph those things later, obviously, as we go through the rational functions. And lastly, we have horizontal asymptote. We look at the original function and we get square over square, so they're equal. The leading coefficients are 1 over 2, and therefore it is y equals 1 over 2. That is going to do it for today's lesson or today's video. I'm going to leave it with this. Hope you guys learned some stuff and I hope that better sets you up for what's to come. I will see you guys later.